Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about making tax digital. Making tax digital is a new government initiative and uh, you wouldn't be surprised to, to hear that the government and the Inland Revenue think this is going to be easier for taxpayers and business owners like you and I. They think it's going to save us time. <laughs> And it has to, it has to make you laugh, doesn't it? And uh, it uh, will make things easier. So uh, that's all good fun. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. The subject will affect uh, you if you are in business in any shape or form. It it will affect you if you are VAT registered. It will affect you if you own properties and uh, that you let out for an income, and it will affect you if you have a business like a limited company or partnership, of course. So uh, let's get started. Before we go too far in, I just wanna talk about why you wanna to listen to me, You know, why should you listen to me? Uh, well, uh, I am a multi-award winning chartered accountant. I have been featured in the book, The UK's Best Accounting Firms, a couple of years ago, and we're among 40 accountants featured in that book. So that was a really nice uh, accolade to have under our belt. Of course, winning awards for the last four years, five years in the runner-up category and winning uh, the online accounting category So in the UK. So that really does demonstrate we know what we're talking about when it comes to digital. We're right up there with the best of them in understanding how to automate, leverage, and make the most of the digital age we're, we're in now. So um, I've also written a book called Profit Propeller, which uh, hit the Amazon bestseller list in the Kindle categories uh, in a couple of years ago. And I've also written a couple of books, one called Sell More, Make More, because I love sales and marketing, and uh, another one called Understanding the Key Financial Aspects of Your Business, uh, which helps uh, new business owners understand the numbers, uh, which is, of course, the language of business. So that's enough about me. Uh, the agenda today, we're going to be talking about what this is about. I've given you a little brief demonstration or explanation, who it will affect, uh, the relevant dates, the HMRC behavior we can expect and have seen before, fines and penalties, all part of that, possible solutions, and of course, the next steps. So I always end uh, with a couple of next steps. I love coaching. It is in my blood. I love helping businesses do better. So we'll be covering next steps. So, making tax digital. What's who's in the frame then? As I've already said, well, every sole trader, partnership and landlord will be affected. The very smallest may have some exemptions, but you've got to be assuming that if you have anything other than a small hobby that you will be caught by this. And if you have even one property you let, whether it's commercial or domestic, you will be caught by this. And if you're, of course, if you run partnerships, you'll be caught by that. If you're VAT registered, you'll be caught. If you're a limited company, you'll be caught. If larger companies, definitely caught. Smaller companies, caught. So uh, that basically covers who's caught. Uh, let's look at some of the dates. This might surprise you if you haven't been keeping uh, tabs with this. In April 2018, all sole traders, partnerships, and landlords will be uh, caught in this fray. April 2019, VAT will be down for digital submission, which means you can't go into the gateway and file your VAT return. It's got to be done through the software. And in April 2020, just a couple of years away, by the way, April 18 is you know, less than 12 months away, right? April 2020 will be limited company. So that's the dates. Oh, what is the big deal here? You know, is there a real problem? Well, yes, unfortunately so. The first bit of the problem is the timing. Uh, if you're a sole trader or landlord, um, then our partnership, you have only got under nine, under 12 months to get your act like if, Well, I'm recording this right now. You've got a very short period before you've got to uh, be filing under this system. So you haven't got much time to generate new ideas, new, new systems, new possibilities so that you can let them bed in because the last thing you want is to file wrong returns at uh, the time you have to file them. So that would be hugely dangerous. There, of course, you need to set up systems. So that takes time. You know what it's like. You're busy. 
you know, and I'm busy. Everyone's busy. We're really busy. We haven't got time to develop new systems. We can't just put aside, you know, all of March 2017 or 2018 or 2019, depending on when our target hits, to start looking at our systems. We've got to build them slowly because we've got to get our team on board. We've got to get on board. We've got to get things moving and settle in and test it. And so that's uh, one of our changes. The other problem is we're going to make massive disclosure on a regular basis to the inland revenue. Right now, we file our, our profit and loss account once a year. We'll be filing these four and a half, four and maybe five times a year, four times for four quarters, plus an, an annual adjustment. So we're disclosing lots of information far more regularly, which, is, uh, which has a significant problem because... Can you imagine if you submit figures every quarter and then you have a big adjustment at the end of the year, what do you think may happen? Do you think they might investigate? Do you think they might go, well, why are you making such a big adjustment? Your profits were so high and now you're submitting your year-end accounts and they're so low. What's going on? We want this extra tax. Let's come and have a visit and spend a couple of days with you to try to find out what's going on. Is it that you're not keeping good books? And if you're not keeping good books, not only can we fine you for not keeping good books, but we can then charge you whatever tax we want. Uh, maybe we can just tie you up in red tape until you give us some money. Or maybe we'll just find a few things that, you know, maybe a bit gray, but we'll give you so much hassle you just want to settle. Uh, whatever it is, you know, it's not great. And so it comes with a significant risk of higher investigations. I hope you can see that. Uh, what are the benefits? Now, I had to struggle on this one a little bit, but I think, you know, if you know me, you'll probably get a sense of what these benefits are before I go to them. Uh, and here we are. The first benefit, of course, is that you need to develop systems, and systems cannot be a bad thing, can it? It has got to be a good thing. So developing systems is really cool uh, because it's going to help you run your business. It's going to give you more information, more regularly, more up to date. Most businesses, unfortunately, that uh, I start working with until we get into the process, uh, have annual accounts. Now, that means they don't have management information they can really use to control and run their business from one year to the next. That is terrible. The, the, the currency, the language of business is numbers. Uh, you know, Warren Buffett, right? And uh, if you don't understand your numbers, you're not going to be in control of your business. If you don't understand and work your numbers, you're going to make less profit than you could have done end off. Okay, that is a guarantee. So you've really got to get your information and understand your numbers. That's critically uh, why clients love what we do. Uh, on our Profit Multiplier program, for example, it's all about understanding numbers and taking action. So when you get the information, you then have to take action. There's no point just having information for information's sake and giving it to the revenue. They get the benefit. Uh, you don't, right? But if you get the information and then you take action based on that to make a, uh, yourself a better business, build yourself a better business with a better quality of clientele, a better quality of sales, a better quality of margin, a better quality of profit, and a bigger number of profit and cash in your bank, then of course that's going to be good for you, right? And that all is going to, be, uh, is going to result in increased profits for you, which ultimately, of course, results in increased cash flow, which puts more money in your bank accounts. So you can have the bigger houses, the bigger cars, you know, whatever floats your boat. Some clients like bigger houses and bigger cars. Some clients like holidays, like me. Uh, you know, I'm not too too big on cars and uh, and houses, but I do like. Well, I'm into houses because I've got quite. <laughs> I got about fifty of them, uh, but that's why I got so many property clients who are going to get caught by this. But uh, you, know, uh, for me, it's holidays. I love travel, and so um, you know, you can have all of those things because. You're using the benefits, not only to give the inland revenue information, but to, um, excuse me, not only to give the uh, inland revenue information, but also to make sure that um, you get benefit from it. You do not want to be the person who ends up uh, giving the, you're working hard and paying money to give the inland revenue information with no benefit for yourself. Those less affected, uh, this is really important, it's one of the benefits, right? Larger clients, all my larger clients will, will not feel this too much because they already uh, have digital platforms and they're already VAD registered. They're already used to submitting some information. It's very rudimentary at the moment on that, but they are used to submitting returns every quarter within 30 days. 
And so if you're bad registered in a larger client, you'll, you'll probably, in, you know, you probably less, have got a, less of a hill to climb than the smaller clients. And of course, most of my larger clients are on either our digital platforms or their own digital platforms, which means they do their accounts on software, which means that the, the change from doing the accounts on software to filing it with inland revenue is not significant because most of the software houses I'm talking to are already on board with uh, getting ready for making tests digital uh, for larger companies as well as smaller companies. So um, important, uh, you've got to look at the, it's legal. You're definitely going to be legal, right? Uh, this is a legal requirement. You can't just go, I don't, it doesn't apply to me. You haven't got a lot of time to affect it. And of course, you got a significantly increased risk of fines with the risk of submitting wrong data, which then leads you into investigations. The fines at the moment, you know, you get potential fines once a year when you file your accounts. Uh, with this, you're now going to have five fines a year. You're going to have one per quarter plus one at the end of the year adjustment. So you've got five opportunities. And I think this is going to be a massive money spinner for the Inland Revenue and the government, which is why I think they're hammering us so hard. But yeah, I, they live in an alternative reality. It's a bit like, do you remember uh, uh, when the American elections were on, they were talking about a different reality, right? And uh, you see, one person's reality was this and the alternative reality was, was that, you know? And so I think the Inland Revenue live in a world of an alternative reality where, you know, business owners like you and me just want to do more book work. They want to do more paperwork. And uh, they have no concept of uh, that we've got a business to run and how busy it is at the coalface of running an entrepreneurial business. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's a problem that as UK businesses, we're probably used to, but this is just another nail into that, uh, into that wound. So let's look at some considerations. Um, you've got to get some systems in because if you don't have a system, the chances of being able to file anything within 30 days of a quarter end is going to be pretty slim, right? Why not think of automating? There's so many automation tools available now to us. Uh, you know, in our, in our hands-free, hassle-free bookkeeping system, we, have, we use automation to the nth degree where clients hardly have to touch any paper. Stuff just happens and it turns up um, in their accounts and they have the analysis for it that we give them. So automation is really good. Spreadsheets, probably not going to work uh, unless you have spreadsheets attached to the Inland Revenue digital format. Now, the chances are you're going to have to buy that format of spreadsheets because generally your Excel or Google Sheets is unlikely to do that out of the box. You're going to need to buy some sort of connectivity. Uh, and then here's the, you know, there is the stick stick. There's no carrot here. There's no good news by the revenue. It's just, you know, we're going to, we're going to uh, force you to do it. And if you don't do it, we're going to fine you. So stick and stick, right? And they're going to charge us 280 pounds to register for making that digital MTD for sure. You know, 280 pounds for the privilege of, of them giving us this pain, hassle and grief uh, to go along to that platform. I think that is ridiculous. But, you know, the revenue seem at the moment to get away with anything. And that is the most disgusting part of where we are now. You know, people have called it the sort of, you know, the 1984 syndrome. You know, we just seem to have Big Brother can get away and do anything. It's horrible. Uh, you know, in the, uh, the Treasury Committee, he actually said this looks overambitious, their timescales, right? At the Institute of Chartered Accountants, they said while they support the move to digital, which makes sense, right? It will take at least five years to do it properly, but the revenue of force you live, they know best, right? Uh, and even the Treasury Committee said they should uh, leave it until 1920, but they're gonna do it in 2018 because they know best, the revenue know best, right? Um, so what does this mean for you? Have a think about that for a second while I pause for a breath. I, I do talk quite quickly, I do apologize. So have a, have a little think about that. And just think, what does this mean for you? Okay, so uh, hopefully you realize that you've got to make these changes. These things are coming and they're not pleasant, but like everything, like everything in business, you know, us business people just get on with it, right? We're not, we're not whingers, we just get on. So um, what are more considerations? Let's have a look at some of those. There is going to be a soft landing, they tell us. They said for the first year, I don't know if it's the first year for everyone. See, you know, we're so close to it and they still haven't given us the detail. 
uh, it, for they, they're not going to charge too many fines. They haven't told us what too many are or too high fines. We don't know whether they're going to charge any fines, but we've got to wait and see, right? So there's going to be a soft landing for 12 months, but we're not sure exactly what that means. Uh, are they going to be fines? We don't even know how much the fines are going to be. Are they going to be typically £100? Uh, in some areas, they're 100 pounds for the first offence, 350 pounds for the second, a thousand pounds for the third, and the 1500 pounds for the fourth. Is that what they're going to do? In VAT, they charge you a percentage if if you're late uh, more than uh, more than a, a little while. Uh, and of course, you're going to have to file a year-end adjustment because the chances of your quarterly figures being exactly the same as you as for adding up to your, your annual is pretty small because there's usually some adjustments accountants like us put in, isn't there? And so what if that adjustment is huge? You know, sometimes clients miss out a whole load of things like depreciation or amortization or, um, or salary. Sometimes they, they uh, near towards the end of the year, they put in, uh, you know, direct to salary that can make a big impact on the quarterly figures. Will that cause an Indian revenue investigation as the figures fluctuate so much? So investigations is a big consideration. You know how much those cost. Forget about the, the, the time. I mean, well, let's not forget about the time. It can take you know, a week or two weeks out of your, of your calendar to get uh, into these investigations and give them what they need, even if they find nothing. But they, you know, it's still a costly exercise, uh, exclu including professional fees, right? Uh, by the way, having a tax insurance in today's market, a tax investigation insurance is absolutely critical. Uh, because uh, the, the risk of investigations has demonstrably gone up. We have a very good hit rate, which means our, our premiums for uh, tax fee, fee protection is, is uh, relatively low, but uh, I would recommend that. And of course, uh, you've got 30 days to file these uh, quarterly reports, which is not a long time to file, not just a VAT return, but a quite a sensitive document, your profit and loss, right? That's pretty bad. So they are, oh, here we go. Look, they're offering some good news. They're offering free software. Now, <laughs> the free software is only really available to small businesses unincorporated who are not that registered, have no employees, and your, your accountant will not have access to that software because they want you to stand on your own two feet. So you wouldn't be able to share your ID with us because that would be uh, dangerous. Uh, we, would, we don't accept personal client IDs. We have our own logins as uh, accountants but for this software they're thinking of using for landlords and sole traders and stuff this little glorified spreadsheet i think that well, they haven't even developed it yet and we know how poor they are at launching these uh, uh ideas of theirs then we you know they, they a couple of years ago uh, they they spent over a billion pounds developing some software for doctor's surgeries and stuff which they had to scrap you know ridiculous waste of money but you know here we are again so What's next? Um, the first thing you need to do, in my opinion, this is just a suggestion, is you need to plan. If you don't plan right now for what's going to happen to making these returns, how accurate can you get them as, as early as possible, then I think you'll be lost uh, and be in trouble. You will have some systems uh, to develop. And, you know, some of these you can, you know, we can, uh, demonstrate what they are. If you listen to my blogs, there's lots of the systems uh, are described in my blog. So have a look at those if you're interested in that. Uh, you haven't got much time, so plan how you're going to roll this out. I would suggest start early, give yourself the advantage of getting some practice in and uh, getting the information and growing your business. As I said, in one of the benefits right at the top of this, I said one of the benefits are you will have good quality information if you do it right and you will be able to make good quality business decisions to grow your business. And of course, um, you need to decide what software to use. We recommend a few on our site. Uh, I'll put some links on to our, uh, some of our software. We use Xero, uh, QuickBooks, uh, our two big favorites. We also have Cashflow, and of course we have um, uh, Free Agent and a whole host of others and even saved one, but um, our favorites are QuickBooks and uh, Zero, definitely. But you've got to choose something that you're going to run. The bigger you are, you may need to do something desktop, but generally speaking, for most businesses, you know, five, 10 million turnover, you know, some online software like Zero does it beautifully in this 
a link to our site where you can watch some videos on, on how it works and how easy it is to use. Some clients have been very resistant to it. When they're put in front of it for a couple of weeks, they absolutely love it and uh, they refuse to do without it. There's also uh, automation. Now, if you're doing all of these changes to your systems, your bookkeeping systems, wouldn't it make sense to automate as much as possible uh, rather than having to key things in and have people have bookkeepers typing uh, lots of numbers in? Wouldn't that just isn't that just a waste? So consider automation how you can build that in, and when you do all of that, you can get leverage. You can have more time for yourself to sell and grow your business, and less time pouring over faded paperwork and spending time money on people doing unnecessary work that automation can deal with. So um, the preferred solution we have is of course, an online accounting software like Xero, QuickBooks, um, and something like those. So th those are our favorites, as you know, uh, made no, no bones about it. We also talk about bank links in those software where we, your bank will talk to your software in a one direction mode. Your bank will squirt information into your software. It can't go the other way. Your software can't uh, influence the bank in any way, shape, or form. And what means that? Well, that means is that your bank, uh, you know, your data from your bank into the software is nearly automatic. It then needs to be coded up and reconciled, of course, but uh, the chances of error are, are reduced significantly. And of course, why not go down the, the, the automation route and look at receipt recognition? We have this app on our, on our phones where you can just take a picture of uh, your receipts like coffees and teas and lunches and train tickets and stuff and uh, send it uh, to our bookkeepers and they just put it into your accounts and link the receipt to your accounts. If you've got a PC World, take a picture, uh, off it goes and you, when you want to look at your software, you'll see the PC World receipt in there with all the data in there, which then leads to your accounts. Lovely, lovely uh, tech, piece of technology that is available now that wasn't available five years ago, for example. Uh, that is why, as you know, we won the Online Accountant of the Year for the UK, which was you know, fantastic, and it just demonstrates we know what we're talking about. And you should uh, benefit from that by listening to this presentation and making use of it. Uh, I would be amiss if I didn't mention our hands-free, hassle-free bookkeeping system. It is absolutely beautiful. What it does is it takes a whole lot of data, it takes information from sales and expenses and your banks, uh, puts it into us. It, goes through a process of checking, uh, coding, uh, analysis, and then uh, it uh, mainly, as you can see, goes out to you in the way of management report, support, and advice. It goes to company's house at the end of the year. If you're a limited company, it goes to revenue for returns, payroll, and reports. So, you know, it is a really beautifully automated process. We call it hands-free because it's almost... Uh, Inevitable that you don't even touch a piece of paper nearly, right? Any email receipts just get emailed straight to us, uh, to our bookkeeping uh, email. And as I said, small receipts, you just take a picture off with your smartphone and job done. Uh, so let's look at who this is for. It is for you if uh, you are forward thinking. Clearly, if you understand this is coming and you might as well get in now and get some benefits now before the pain comes along and gives you, and gives you, uh, a, uh, makes it essential that you do it and if you're forced to do it, why not do it voluntarily and get the benefits for doing it? Uh, it is inevitable. So if you understand it's inevitable, then you do it sooner rather than later and get even bigger benefits faster. It'll be less stressful for you because you're doing it early when you don't have to so that when you have to, it's all routine and the routines are all established. You will get more control of your business. Most business owners are controlled by their business. Their business determine what hours they have to work, uh, how hard they have to work, how many holidays they can't take, uh, how much income they can't have, all of that sort of stuff. With this, you can begin to get that control of your business, control of your destiny, which typically is why you went into business, isn't it? It's not for you though, uh, if, uh, <laughs> this is one of, my, one of my favorite picks, if you're living, if you're living in hope, right? If you hope that it's not going to affect you, if you hope it won't come in, if you hope it's going to be go away without affecting you, if you hope you're not going to be affected, uh, it, it's not for you if, you if you're used to burying your head in the sand and assuming uh, it's not going to hit. I've got a client uh, at the moment who we've had to send a disengagement letter out to because we've waited two years and uh, they just wouldn't give us the information, couldn't give us the information or didn't try to give us the information. And now they've got a letter saying the business is about to be closed down by company's house. 
uh, and now they're taking action. Now they want to know how they can get this thing done. And we've only got 30 days to get it done. You know, it's a dreadful state of affairs, stressful for them and stressful for, for us and doesn't get the job done really well. And of course, winging it. Uh, if, you just, if, you, if you're in the habit of just chucking some figures and hoping, hoping the revenue don't uh, pick up the problems, then this is probably not for you. So I, uh, I would end there, but I'm just going to end with a little bit of coaching. I, you know, I, like I said at the beginning, I'm a bit of a coach at heart. I like everything I do. I like to have some benefit for you. So uh, here we go. Let's get a bit of coaching on this. Now, we use this in our Profit Multiplier program in more detail. But for this, I want you just to think about this particular problem, the, the problem of making tax digital, MTD. And uh, what I'd like to know, based on what you've heard now, is in the two weeks that follow, what would you have liked to achieve in relation to this in the two weeks from now? Okay, just uh, think about what you'd like to have achieved. Would you like to have thought of a plan, written down a plan, maybe uh, mind map a plan, or talk to your accountant about a plan? Uh, in the next two weeks, what would you have liked to do? Okay, and in the next month, what would you have liked to do in this subject alone, right? Would you, what would you have wanted to do in the next four weeks? Four weeks is a long time in business, right? And if you, if you, and you must take, you must put all of these things down in a calendar, just having them down in your head or on a piece of paper is not going to help unless you put it down on a calendar. When I work with my Profit Multiplier program clients, we insist on diarizing a couple of key tasks into the diary so they're locked in so that we make progress. And that's how we look at doubling uh, profits and halving the time it takes to do it, halving the number of hours you have to work to do it. Uh, and uh, we do it because we set plans, we set uh, activities, and we execute on those activities without fail and we measure what we get. And finally, what would you have liked to achieve in the three months from now? Now, that is plenty of time with current uh, systemization and automation and our know-how to get this thing running and working. We Typically, we to take a client on to our hands-free, hassle-free bookkeeping system typically takes about three months, not on our side necessarily, but to get the client routines in place. So why not, why not aim for something like that uh, for yourself, whichever way you do it? And that is is the end of the presentation and our coaching. So I would like to thank you for sharing that time with me. Hopefully you end up with a, a bit more knowledge about what's coming down the line for you. Um, you know, it's not long away. If you have a property or you're in a sole trader business or partnership, you've got months to plan for this and get it in. And uh, I, would, I would encourage you to make sure you do that. So, uh, I'd like to thank you again. Uh, I'd like if you you'd like this, please find the like button somewhere. If you're on a YouTube channel, click the like button. If you're on Facebook, click the like button. Uh, go back to the where you saw the article. Um, share it, please. And of course, comment on it. Tell us what you think. Tell us whether you think the government is completely bananas when they think this is going to reduce your time and uh, make it easier for you to file accounts. <laughs> it, is, it is laughable. And uh, you know, it doesn't accord with my understanding of what businesses own. However, remember that overall thing. You could make this pay for you if you take the information that this is going to give you and use it to grow your business. If you just have it as data for them, they're the ones benefiting from your extra work. Why not get more out of it from you? I keep banging on about it. I don't apologize for that. Too many businesses do their accounts for the tax man, not for themselves. The taxman should be an also ran. You should be the main beneficiary. That's what I like. That's why, you know, my clients call me the numbers whisperer because I really understand numbers and we help them get the most out of them. So thank you very much for listening. Please look at what you've just written down for two weeks, one month, three months, and execute that plan. And uh, until we get a chance to meet in person or chat or you want to know more about any of our programs, please let us know and we'll send you the relevant links to learn more about them. Take care of yourself. All the best. Goodbye.